saying that you can change your environment, your situation to reduce your stress. Very, very important differences, and it's important to make those distinctions. Early life. So Michael Marmot talks about what happens in early life sets the stage for the rest of your life. So a good start in life means supporting mothers and young children. Um, supporting mothers so that they can support young children. Supporting mothers so that they can help nourish their children and, 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 and raise them in ways that will uh, set them up to be successful in life. Um, now, uh, myself and, and, and others, um, even here in the department, have done some research looking at stunted development and, and how this relates to cognitive functioning, social mobility, and long-term health. Now, so if you have stunted development as, an, as, as a very young child, meaning that you're physically not developing, um, probably, most likely, um, due to nutrition. So if you're not getting enough nutrition, um, uh, healthy foods, then you don't develop uh, appropriately physically, your, your, your brain does not develop appropriately, which is going to probably um, result in cognitive functioning, which means you probably won't be able to learn how to read as well. And you won't have the same social abilities and you won't um, perform well in school, which is going to influence your social mobility, meaning that you can't get a better job and you can't move up the social class, which is going to impact your long-term health. So, um, what happens early in life is very, very important for later life. So, um, birth weight along the x-axis here in this, in this bar graph compared with um, risk of diabetes later on. And, and what's fascinating here, and so we use birth weight as kind of an indicator of social class and what happens early in life as it relates to a mother's ability to care for a child. So while there are circumstances of low birth weight in, in healthy mothers, um, a higher incidence of, birth, of low birth weight would be um, related to um, poverty, the mother being poor or living um, possibly drug use or, or, or a number of other factors most of them uh, concentrated on women that are lower on the social um, class or slow, social gradient. And what you see is that risk for diabetes goes up dramatically as birth weight goes down. And, and this is uh, risk of diabetes at age 64. So this is even much later in life. And so that, I mean, this, this really just drives home the concept that what happens early in life is very important uh, for, for um, health status later in life. I'm going to uh, skip this example here um, and talk about social exclusion. So social exclusion um, is, as Michael Marmot talks about, um, not being a full participant in, in, in society or in your community. And um, poverty, deprivation, and social exclusion impact health and premature death. Um, chances of living in poverty are loaded heavily against some social groups. And so you might say, well, who might be these marginalized or, um, or, or, or socially excluded groups? Um, these could be, they could be um, culturally, relate, culturally related, uh, could be racially related, could be related to poverty. So um, even if it's a, a very uh, racially homogenous community, Poor people live over here and rich people live over here. And rich people are on the city council and poor people are not. They are less involved. We might call that social exclusion. One of the ways that we think about social exclusion, by the way, is um, in voting disparities. And there are huge voting disparities by racial and ethnic groups and, and um uh, that's just one indicator of social exclusion, um, and, and there might be many others, um, you know, all the way from you know country club memberships to um, um, to to um, using public parks um, where uh, people lower on the social gradient don't feel that they have access to, they don't feel that they have the same opportunities to to utilize those things, and therefore they they oftentimes feel socially excluded.
Um, this is very interesting as it relates to, um, to, to poverty and, and, and social exclusion. And you may be interested to note that, uh, and this is the proportion of children living in poor households, um, and, and the United States among select um, mostly European countries, um, the United States, as it would compare to these countries, has the highest proportion of children living in poor households. And so how does that relate to social exclusion? Well, if you live in a poor household and you're a young child, how, how could you be socially excluded? Now, if we were in a class setting and we could have this dialogue, I'm sure we could come up with a lot of things, but let me propose a few. Think about some on your own um, as I'm talking about this, but if you live in a poor household, um, yes, you could go to school, um, but could you go to a, um, a, a private school? And could you have the same opportunities? Could you attend the orchestra? Could you participate in the orchestra? Do you participate in organized sports? Probably not as likely. Well, you certainly are not as likely. You're not as likely to have a trainer or to have a, a, a coach or get personalized attention. So you're probably not going to be as good. You won't be as competitive. You won't play on the best teams. Um, and, and the list goes on and on and on. Those are simple, very simple examples. Uh, one other example um, when we talk about social exclusion and its immediate impact on health would be that you are less likely um, to, to access... Um, resources or locations in your community that might help you be more healthy. So you're less likely to go to a Whole Foods store. You're less likely to have a gym membership. You're less likely to, um, to you know, participate in, in community events, health events like fun runs or you know, marathons or, or other activities. Work. Now, um, there's consistent evidence that high job demand, low control, and effort reward imbalance are risk factors for mental and, and, and physical health problems. Now, when you think about high demand and low control and effort reward imbalance, um, I hope you think about the matching law that we discussed previously in our lecture on behavior modification. The matching law again states that in order for behavior to occur reliably, there has to be a balance between the amount of effort that's required and the reward. Now, if the reward is too small and the effort is too high, then the behavior is not likely to happen reliably. And if so, it's gonna happen under very, very um, forced or contrived circumstances. And it probably results in low job satisfaction, which is likely to result in stress at work. Um, now, when you talk about control, control in your job, how does that play out? Um, and this is self-reported level of job control and incidence of coronary heart disease. And so um, individuals that report um, high control at their job are much less likely to suffer coronary heart disease. Um, odds ratios um, two and a half times more likely if you had to have coronary heart disease if you have low job control. And, and what does that mean? Well, if you work in a position where somebody comes to you and says, um, or you, you get to choose your own schedule, you get a little bit of freedom when you want to take time off, um, you have better benefits, you have, um, you have better, um, you just generally work in a better environment where you have some control. You get to do some of the things you like to do at work. You get to use your skills. Um, low job control would be where you have a very set schedule. And if you're late, you get penalized and perhaps even fired. You are not allowed to take days off um, unless you, um, under very, very um, uh, rare circumstances, and probably you don't um, get paid time off. Um, and you, uh, nobody comes to you and asks you what your opinion is on such and such project and how it should best be done and what aspect of the job would you like to do. Unemployment. Now, um, job security increases health, well-being, and job satisfaction. Um, higher rates of unemployment cause more illness and premature death. Unemployment linked with uh, psychological and financial problems. I mean, it's very clear why unemployment is related to poor health. And, um, well, we just talked about work, 
in the, the, the previous determinant of health. And it's important to note that having a job is probably better than, than no job at all. Um, and, and certainly unemployment is likely to result in, in, in poor health. Um, and job insecurity um, you know, relates to this chronic um, condition of um, in and out of jobs. And so um, people that are higher on the social gradient have higher job security. Um, so somebody who has an advanced degree, let's say a professional degree of some kind, um, you've gone to, you, you attended graduate school and preferably at a, at a prestigious place. So you have a lot of contacts and you have a very rich network that you can, uh, that, that you can access. So you're not concerned about losing your job. You're not concerned about losing your job uh, in, in the coming weeks or months. And if you do lose your job, you're very confident that you could get another job that pays equally as well. Now, this has been very evident with the recent recession that we've gone through, that uh, um, those lower on the social gradient, um, African Americans and Hispanics, have been hit hardest in their um, uh, um, general assets, so their general wealth, um, because they might likely to suffer greater job insecurity and employment rates, uh, unemployment rates, that is, for African Americans right now are approximately double what they might be for, for um, non-Hispanic whites. A lot of that would be related to the social gradient in this, uh, the idea of, of um, job security and unemployment. And uh, uh, for both illness and, 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 and mental health, um, incidence is much higher for those that um, are uh, insecurely employed or unemployed. And some of this may relate to um, benefits and things like that, so your access to health care. Social support. Um, now, I, I put the uh, a flag of Brazil. If you've ever been to Brazil, um, uh, the first time I traveled around Brazil, I was uh, struck um, in the sense that it was a place that, in my mind, um, has a lot of social support. So it, it's a country that, uh, one of the few developing countries where um,